Dear students, today we will discuss about the diseases of tea and its management. India is the largest producer and consumer of tea, that is Camellia sinensis, in the world. It is grown mainly in three major regions in India, the Nilgiris region in southern India, Assam and Darjeeling in northeast. The largest producers of tea are Assam contributing 50.75%, West Bengal 22.1%, Tamil Nadu 15.9% and Kerala 8.3%. Other areas where tea is grown to a small extent are Karnataka, Tripura, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Sikkim, Nagaland, Mizoram, Bihar, and Odisha. Since the leaves are the harvest product in tea, leaf diseases play an important role. The most important disease being the blister blight found in Asia, followed by the worldwide present root diseases. Now we will discuss some of the important diseases of tea. First one is the blister blight. It is caused by Exobacidium vaccans, Exobacidium camelli. Now let's see the symptoms of the disease. Blister blight is the most serious disease affecting shoots of tea and is capable of causing enormous crop loss. The disease is endemic in most tea growing areas in Asia, but is not known to occur in Africa or America. The first visible symptom is an oily yellowish translucent spot on tender leaf and turn deep red shiny blisters. The circular spot gradually enlarges to 3 to 13 millimeter diameter bulged on the under surface of the leaf with a depression on the upper surface forming a classic blisters lesion. Leaves become curled and distorted. It attacks the first flush of two to three young leaves and kill the young shoots and buds. Thus, the new growth is largely ruined. Mature leaf is not affected. If the disease appears in nursery, when stem is less than 15 cm height, seedlings are stunted and produce many thin stems instead of a single stalk. Repeated attacks cause that of seedlings. This is about the symptom. Now let's see the epidemiology of the disease. Cloudy, wet weather favors infection. The disease cycle repeats continuously during favorable, that is, wet conditions. And the spores are readily dispersed by wind. Spores that land on a leaf with adequate moisture will germinate and infect it producing visible symptoms within 10 days. The fungus can directly penetrate the leaf T. 
tissue. The life cycle of the fungus is 3 to 4 weeks. Now let's see how to manage the disease. Copper oxychloride and oxides are superior to other formulations and are economic. The whole plantation should be covered in the shortest possible time. Seedlings should be protected by weekly spray in nursery. Nickel chloride is used as an eradicant in South India. It does not stimulate mites and could kill fungus which is already in the leaf tissue. A mixture of 210 gram copper oxychloride with 210 gram nickel chloride per hectare spread at 5 days intervals from June to September and 11 days interval in October to November gave economic control. Among organic fungicides, chlorothionyl and diethionon gave protectant and therapeutic effects. Tridemorph, that is calyxin, diethan M45, bailetin, and pyroclostrobin offered good disease control under field conditions. Next disease. It is dieback and canker. Causal organism is Glomerella cingulata. Now let's see how the symptoms looks like. It is one of the serious of all T diseases. Leaves on affected branches suddenly turn yellow and wilt. Branch tip usually die. Gray blotches appear on the bark and stem and then sunken areas that is cankers develop, eventually girdling the stem. Parts of the plant above the stem canker lose vigor, wilt and die. Now let's see how to manage the disease. Keep the plant as healthy as possible. Area should be well drained in acidic soil, avoid wounding and fertilize properly. By pruning several inches below the cankered areas, remove the diseased twigs. Disinfect pruning tools between all cuts. Using a solution of one part household bleach to nine parts water. Fungicides such as thiophenate methyl and copper salts of fatty acids can be applied during wet periods and normal leaf drop periods to protect fresh leaf scars from infection. Next disease is the gray blight. It is caused by Pestalozia thiei or Pestalociopsis thiei. Now let's see how the symptoms look like. Mature leaves, young shoots and bare stalks are affected. Gray blight adversely affect the health of the bushes, which in turn affects yield and tieback of young shoots directly leads to substantial crop loss. In general, there is round, irregular, gray and necrotic leaf lesions develop on infected part. In the center of older spots, black fruiting bodies were observed. The black fruiting bodies are the acervuli of the fungi. Now let's see the epidemiology of the disease. 
the tiny black spots on the lesions contain the fungal spores rain splash transports the spores from one plant to site of infection to another if the spores land on a leaf they germinate to start a new leaf spot or a latent infection now let's see how to manage this disease spring of carbendazim mancozef or thiophenate methyl is recommended avoid plant stress grow tea bushes with adequate spacing to permit air to circulate and reduce humidity and the duration of leaf wetness next is the red rust it is caused by cephalurus parasiticus cephalurus virescens now let's see the symptoms of the red rust most algal spots develop on the upper leaf surface small translucent water soaking spot appears on leaf on the upper surface the spot become purple red then black with a purple margin on the under surface it is purple red becoming gray brown when old if it attacks petiole at its junction with stem leaf falls down next is the epidemiology algal leaf spot has a wide host range among tropical trees the spores are dispersed by wind or rain the algae may spread from leaves to branches and fruits poor soil drainage imbalanced nutrition and exposure to relative high temperature and humidity predispose tea plants to infection by algal leaf spot now let's see how to manage the disease avoid plant stress avoid poorly drained sites badly diseased bushes should be removed promote good air circulation in the plant canopy to reduce humidity and duration of leaf wetness spray body mixture or copper oxychloride immediately after pruning apply balanced dose of n and k in time now let's see other diseases which are attack on leaf black blight or thread blight it is caused by cortisium choleroga cortisium invisum synonymous is pellicularia choleroga pink disease it is caused by cortisium salmonic color wood rot caused by hypogylon serpens twig dieback or stem canker it is caused by macrophoma thee cola thorny stem blight it is caused by tanstella eculiate flower blight caused by cyborinia kemeli color canker caused by homopsis thee so this is about the foliar diseases now we'll discuss about the some important root diseases and its causal pathogen red root rot it is caused by ganoderma pseudoferum brick red root rot is caused by poria hypolateracea black root rot is caused by rosellinia 
Arqueta or Rosedinia bunodis. Charcoal stem rod or charcoal root or Astrulina charcoal rod is caused by Astrulina deusta and Astrulina juneta. Diplodia root rod it is caused by Plesio diplodia theobrome. Armillaria root rot or root splitting disease is caused by Armillariella melia. White root rot it is caused by Rigidoporous lignosus. Then brown root disease is caused by Phelanus noxious. And rhizoctonia seeding blight caused by rhizoctonia batatikola. Then next root disease, seedling disease is caused by cylindrocladium elisi cola. So these are the root diseases. Now let's see how to manage the different root diseases. Prevention is very important since this disease is difficult to control once plants are infected. Grafting onto a Sasankua rootstock is recommended. Procuring the healthy plants. Choosing locations, having a good drainage for planting. Using raised beds to improve the drainage of existing drainage. Application of fungicides containing etridiazole and mephenoxam for prevention but will not cure an infected plant. Isolating the infected area, opening trenches of 1.3 meter deep and 45 centimeter width and uprooting and burning of infected bushes can control the other root diseases. Rehabilitating the soil with Guatemala grass and use of biocontrol agents at 200 gram per plant such as Trichoderma hargeanum for red root and root splitting, Trichoderma viridi for black root, Trichoderma hargeanum, Trichoderma viridi, Trichoderma hematum, Trichoderma resi and Trichoderma coningi for brown rot and Trichoderma virens for red, brown and root splitting can effectively check the diseases. Soil fumigation with carbon disulfide gives effective control of these diseases. So this is all about the fungal diseases. Next is the bacterial diseases. Here we will learn about the name of the bacterial disease and its causal organism. First one is the bacterial canker. It is caused by Genthomonas campestris pathova thi cola. Then bacterial soot blight. It is caused by Pseudomonas avalani pathova thi. Another bacterial disease that is crown gall caused by Agrobacterium tumefaciens. So this is all about the bacterial diseases. Next, we will discuss some of the nematode diseases name. Some nematode diseases which are affecting to coffee are burrowing nematode, dagger nematode, pin nematode, reniform nematode, root knot nematode, spiral nematode and stunt nematode. So this is the nematode diseases of T. T is 
one of the most important plantation crops growing in India. Due to its perennial nature, management of the disease is difficult. It is infected by several pathogens among which blister blight, dieback and canker, black blight or thread blight, gray blight, red rust and pink disease are the important ones causing threat to tea production. Management of the diseases depends on proper diagnosis and timely application of the control measures. The most effective and sustainable control of the diseases will be obtained when different management strategies were integrated together.